Explorer One Demo, released by Anderson Research and Design, programmed by Craig Anderson. Video art for the Bally Arcade Astrocade with Bally Basic. From an article called DMA Graphics from the April May 1980 issue of Cursor, and it is also contained on the tape released in 1980 called Graphics Demo Tape. This program is for the Bally Arcade, also known as the Astrocade. It must be used with the 300 baud interface. It is not compatible with the Astro Basic cartridge because the data must be loaded while the program is running from the 300 baud interface. Possibly it could be rewritten to work with that cartridge, but it will not run as is. This program was archived from the graphics demo tape in Richard Hauser's collection. This program is on side two and it must be loaded with input one to load the first program. This is a streaming video animation. This program was published in the April, May 1980 issue of Cursor. It is a very long program, including an article and a tutorial on how to make use of some sophisticated graphics on the Bally Basic cartridge. I was originally going to give detailed commentary on this program and how it worked. But if you want to see any of that, just look up the article. Uh, I will give it a brief mention though here. Uh, it begins with uh, the Bally screen display is composed of 14,080 pixels. And that's the Bally in basic mode. The dimensions of the screen are 160 pixels wide by 88 pixels high. In contrast, the Astrocade's actual resolution, not in basic, is 160 by 102 pixels high, and you can have more than one in one or two colors at the same time. In Bally Basic, each pixel has two possible states. It may be the same color as the background or off. This is called state zero for this article. And the other, it can be the same color as the foreground or on, which is called state one for this article. By poking any of 256 possible values into the even numbered screen memory locations, you can turn the eight pixels controlled by the location on and off. On the second page of the article, there is a short three line program that can be entered in order for you to uh, get this little gremlin uh, displayed on the screen. You would type in the short program, the first line beginning 10 clear, and after you type it in, run it, you would enter these numbers that are in the upper right corner of the screen next to the picture of the gremlin. And after you do that, you'd have this gremlin on the screen. And while a gremlin takes very little memory, imagine drawing him with the box command, a more complicated graphic, such as the spaceship, which you'll see here in a minute, with its launching gantry two blocks wide by 80 blocks high can be a real memory eater. And for this reason, this article describes how you would input the program to tape and then recall it and run it so you can get the pictures on the, or you can get the pixels on the screen without having to uh, waste so much memory. It's a very time consuming process. It takes a long time. It's kind of just an example of what can be done. I'm surprised that no one who used a 2000 baud interface really ran with it. It sort of was used if you think about when any basic program is loaded into the Astro basic cartridge and the whole screen is drawn. Kind of think of that as the equivalent of what this program is doing, but in 300 baud basic. Uh, which could, I mean, if you wanted to fill the entire screen, it could take many minutes, four, five, six minutes, maybe, I don't know. But if you're going to do it in 2000 baud basic, it would only take uh, up to 20 seconds. So one of the steps uh, to this program is that you would have to load all this data. Now, at the very bottom of this page, on the right-hand side of page 27, there's a short program, and it's not even a line number. So you would type in NT equals zero, etc., and then you would enter the data. Now check out all of this data you have to enter by hand. Here, okay, are you, you got your eyes wide open? Here, okay, I hope you're sitting down because look at it, here we go. Now, is that a block of data or what? So the way you would enter this data is you don't need to enter all of it. You only need to enter the decimal numbers, not the binary numbers. But you would enter zero, followed by 512, followed by 2048, and eventually you'd have all the data entered onto tape and you could recall it with this program. I'm glad that this program has been archived because I can't imagine anyone ever typing this program in. It would be a hassle to do, but it is pretty neat to uh, check out how it works. I'm going to quote a little bit from this last page. Uh, Craig Anderson says, 
it may have occurred to you that it is possible to write a half hour long animation cartoon and play it on the screen directly from the cassette tape, bypassing computer memory entirely. It sounds like a lot of work, but for a trade show or a business presentation, it would certainly be an intention getter, why you could even get paid for it. Animation involves the blanking out of a block and either moving the entire block, rough animation, or rearranging the pixels within the block, fine animation. The spaceship you just drew has been animated as follows. The umbilical cord drops away from the nose of the rocket, and pay attention when you're watching this video and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Then the walkway re retracts into the gantry. The entire gantry then rolls away from the rocket off the right side of the screen. A countdown begins. At zero, smoke and flames arise from the launch platform and the rocket majestically rises and disappears off the top of the screen. In a moment, I'm going to begin loading up this program. And I don't normally show a program loading at 300 baud because it's so slow. In this case, I decided the program is short enough that it, I can show it loading and it takes about one minute. I decided to show this loading process for two reasons. This program begins running and then continues to get input from the tape. It takes this input and places it directly on the screen as described in the DMA graphics article that I just was talking about. This is a slow process, but it allows the programmer to place graphics onto the screen anywhere by streaming the data from the tape. It's an interesting concept, one which wasn't used much in the Bally due to the slow tape interface. Streaming data from disk drives was used much more often on other 8-bit computers. This is another program that you may want to fast forward through a bit uh, to watch it, but I'm archiving it in its actual state of loading at 300 baud because that's how the program would load and look if you were using Unreal hardware. Enjoy the video. There's a short program listing afterward. The program is quite short because all it does is set up the data to be loaded and then loads the data and prints a message onto the screen.